nice pet. Nice! I'm the top G! <laughs> I'm exactly like Andrew Tate. <laughs> Just for like one guy who takes the train into like the Pentagon every day. <laughs> to buy a missile. To buy like imagine like McDonald's did an ad just for you to right. get the to get like the new honey butter chicken sandwich or something. Oh my god! Okay, I yeah. had no idea about that. Yeah, it's the same thing. Ads Check one for two. missiles. Are we on, Ben? Yeah, we're on. Wow! Wow! Fantastic. Week, week after week, and we're in. And we're we're on. And go. I'm uh, I'm cracking open a uh, yeah. What is that? That looks like you're drinking. Uh, Let me show the camera. S- like uh, silly spray. Yeah. Is that more like your kaiju mm. restaurant? <laughs> Melon that you go to? Ramu bottle. This is my uh, my new Japanese uh, store I go to. Yeah. yeah, that's like what Oopa Loompas like get drunk off of. <laughs> yeah, that's like uh, what Flubber like hydrates with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And who framed Roger Rabbit? That's what they drink. What does it taste like? Mountain. It looks like it tastes like Mountain Dew. Let's see. It's melon. They love melons. Mm. Like I said. Mm. I bet it's delicious. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. You want to put some of that in your Michelob? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I love is a beer and a Japanese melted Jolly Rancher mm. candy. What's great about all the Japanese sodas, by the way, is they taste vaguely of alcohol. Yeah. Which is really fun for me. Mm-hmm. I think it's just the lining well, of the a, can. For you, it's a it's a fun like um, only two hundred thirty calories. It's like a Russian roulette for relapsing. Mm-hmm. Where you're like, this could have alcohol. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure out in two hours. I, I only read English. Yeah, who knows? Could have alcohol in it. Who knows? One in six shot. I might be in a subway with my pants off, vomiting. <laughs> who knows? Mm-hmm. It tastes like a fruit by the foot. Yeah. I'm convinced, by the way, there's no alcohol in it. It just turns me Japanese. Right. I'm like, yeah, I had like nine of these. <laughs> and I was like taking shits on the subway. I was trying mm. to like kill myself. Yeah, yeah. Ben, you, you had your eyes taped back. <laughs> what are you doing? You're bowing to the dogs. Uh, walking up to the dogs and going, Udu, Udu. All their fast food is, it feels like a cartoon character compressed into food. <laughs> mm. Well, they have like their KFCs. They have like shrimp burgers and stuff. Oh, really? really? Where they have like a bunch of little, like the tiny shrimp you put in ramen, they just make that into a, a patty. Oh, uh, I don't And know. they like fry that I gotta up. look that up. I yeah. don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Well, we eat like fish sandwiches and like shrimp sandwiches and shit. Yeah, but they're not the tiny little not weird. tiny little ramen yeah. cup shrimp sandwiches. They're not like pedophiles for shrimp. Yeah, shrimp, KFC. Oh, K- uh, it's JF- it's, uh... oh yeah. Yeah, Here we go. so there you go. Oh, that looks like a, it looks like a big shrimp. It looks like a po' boy. Oh, is that like a caviche? Was I wrong? Mm. I yeah. don't even know if this is actually caviche. Oh, here either. we go. This is what you're talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, a little crushed up fried shrimp. Yeah. Mm. Well, Koreans and Japanese people, they, they love their fast food. It's very like, it's, 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 they love fried mayonnaise you know, mm-hmm. pour some flaming Hot Cheetos on it. Yeah, mm. fried panties. Yes, yeah. exactly. Whatever have you. Mm-hmm. 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 Anyways. Yeah, just like a mess hall at an autism camp. <laughs> this is what they're serving. Can you can you give me a bunch of little tiny shrimps from the cups of ramen and fry them in a big cheese bar yeah, and that, put tartar sauce on it? That is what Carmen would eat if he was real. <laughs> <laughs> can I get the fried shrimp sandwich? <laughs> a lot of cheese. Mm. Yeah, that's success, oh, it's man. It's the only fun they have. <laughs> You know, you got to fry cheese and then smother it. Yeah, in mayonnaise. that and that and dating eleven year olds. Yeah. Yes. Did I talk about this? I know we talked. We opened up talking because Ben has all the stupid Japanese drinks now. Yeah. We talked about Japanese people. Did I talk about Japan has a ninety nine point nine percent conviction rate of any crime, except for rape? They have a f- like forty percent conviction rate. I'm not kidding. <laughs> you can look it up. If you commit any crime in Japan, foreigners have been held there for like up to three years and not been charged with anything. Because they have a ninety nine point nine percent conviction rate, but if you rape somebody, they're like, eh, you know. so it's like rigged. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. right, right. Well, because is there even that much crime in Japan? So they like need those prisons to be occupied. Yeah, you know? exactly. Right. It'd be bad for business. But pedophilia, they're like okay with? They're like, yeah, they're like get back out on the streets, big guy. <laughs> How do they even tell? Pedophilia, they treat you like you're a high school quarterback in Texas. Yeah. They're just like, you know, you get a couple rapes a year. <laughs> boys will be boys. Boys will shove a Coke bottle up a yeah. chick's pussy. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's the best damn businessman in Tokyo. <laughs> The way he can run a Y formation, I'd let him fuck my own baby di- baby girl. <laughs> you see that man in a wishbone? It's insane. <laughs> so, well, but wait, rape, just rape is the, but they're fine with rape. Yeah, rape is like forty percent convictions across the board. Huh? Yeah, interesting. I was uh, I was under the impression that Japanese detectives were some of the best in the world. I mean, in terms... That's, that's what I was always under from the impression why, of. Why? Well, you know, movies, <laughs> right. Devin. Because you, you watched know. Old Boy one time. Devin, okay, think of it this way. Have you seen Ocean's Eleven? Yes. Okay, now there's not a Japanese guy in that, but imagine if there was. Okay. He wouldn't There be, is a Japanese guy. There, well, is he Chinese or Japanese? There's the guy that does all the acrobats. Oh, the little guy. jumps through the... The little capuchin the lasers. monkey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the little yep, co- that's what we call that's him. That's what we call him. A little capuchin, a capuchin monkey. monkey. A capuchin monkey. <laughs> yeah. I fed a little baby capuchin monkey corn once, and it was like the highlight of my life. Mm. Are you sure it wasn't an Asian man that you met? <laughs> ben, so... Ben, so colorblind, he goes into Koreatown and throws <laughs> seeds at Korean people. People. He's like, whoo, yeah. whoo. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I own this block. He's like, kuru, 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 yeah. there's a sign as says, don't feed the Chinese. <laughs> because Ben keeps feeding them and their stomachs explode. <laughs> they just keep dying. Yeah. Uh, ben gave Ming Alka Seltzer again. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, I had no idea that. Koreatown in like 19 when were the LA riots 1992 92 yeah. yeah it's like I didn't realize it turned into if you've ever played PUBG it's when the circle starts closing mm-hmm. and then people are running out of, of of crazy buildings with guns and bazookas and and like tomahawks and shit yeah it's crazy it it's crazy rooftop Koreans did you see that video yeah yeah that famous video yeah yeah oh it's a famous video they didn't fuck around they didn't yeah. fuck around at all Jace did you see it yeah, are you talking about the one with Reginald Denny? No, the ones where the Korean store owners yeah, are in sure. the streets, like, shooting and no, shit. No, 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 I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, they literally run. I think we've talked about it because they were all in the North Korean military. Yeah. So they were all military trained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They and, yeah, it's uh, it's great footage. Hold on, let me... Devin, you tweeted it, I think. Yeah, I did. I made a joke I now can't repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody online and would be like, really recycling the tweets, com- Devin. Recycling? Dude. What happened moments later, the Korean merchants never seen and this. store owners who own that shopping yeah. complex, they, they were talking to me for a moment. They said they were fed up. They walked away. Next thing I knew, they walked out of their stores. Three of them were holding guns, and they just started firing at everybody and anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, can you pause it real quick? Yeah. Okay. I love they they still have the hands behind the back. Yeah. Oh, the they guy do? the guy had the hands behind the back and he reached around to like shoot. He's, he's, he's holding a Marlboro light still. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 firing while squatting. It's too small of a window to hit. Mm. <laughs> Man. The drip is amazing. Amazing drip. Yeah, it rules. I mean, it looks mm-hmm. like they're about to like play golf. Yeah, right they're now. about to tee off. Yeah. This is uh this is how uh, lemon pepper was created. <laughs> this is the, blacks yeah. and Koreans came together after this, and they just shook. <laughs> they shook hands and go lemon pepper wet. Yeah, that was the, that was their treaty. We will make <laughs> we will make a wing for all. We will make a lemon pepper wet. <laughs> if you hajima, <laughs> hajima loading. <laughs> Shooting too. It's like, that. That's great. I mean, literally like, literally like an old West movie, just walking down. Yeah. I mean, it's like Ben Foster in um, Hell or High Water. Yeah, they're on like Crenshaw. Or I mean, they're just in the street, just yeah. firing away. That guy's wearing a VHS as a belt buckle. It looks like. <laughs> yeah. And he's dressed like Arnold Schwarzenegger on vacation. He's got a flat top and child molester glasses. <laughs> 
And he's sniping a guy, I'm assuming, who looks like the little kid from the boondocks from like 300 feet away. It was a great, it was a great time in America. Yep. It was a truly great time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This is the only thing, like anything that has ever looked like this before, it's always, this is a, it, it's an op. These mm-hmm. are always feds. This is the only time it's like, no, these are U.S. citizens Dude, who are armed to the teeth right the, here. The riots really were incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The footage we have is unbelievable. I mean, Look the Reg, the it's Re- a Wild West. The Reginald Denny clip is like every, it's like Jason Aldean's like worst nightmare. Jason Aldean. Jason Aldean, yeah. Yeah, because it's just one truck driver who's just like took a wrong turn. He's like, what the hell? What? Is this named after Ben Crenshaw? And then the next thing you know, he's getting dragged out of his window. Mm-hmm. Bricked in the head. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy goes, woo! Like he like celebrates to the helicopter. I know, like he's Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Like he just hit a deep three. Yeah. Three! Like- <laughs> and he checks it. He checks. He did a Steph Curry. He yeah. was like just dancing. There was a light-skinned guy who hit him with a brick from 35 feet away. <laughs> yeah. Man, they just did tomb like the, the, the top of the. They, they just did like tombstone. It's tombstone, just just mm-hmm. outside their store. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did these men ever serve time for this? Uh, I don't think they. Could. Oh, they were given medals. They, yeah, you, you, Garcetti's dad, like yeah, yeah. Garcetti's dad gave him a crown. You think the LAPD is gonna you know figure out who's who? Yeah, the LAPD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the LAPD pulls up and they like see they see who they're shooting at. They're like, oh, these guys, these are the good guys. Yeah. The LAPD just started arresting black people. They were like, Jong Boon Ho, you're coming with us. And they're like, I'm fucking, my name's Jamal. They're like, ah, we saw you with the gun. You're coming with us. No, you own the 7-Eleven on 3rd Street. You're on top of it with a rifle. The, so this is the archetype of uh, like Korean guy in LA. But isn't there also the Korean guy who loves black people? Who like dabs him up and shit? That's, that's their that's kids. Their kids love their, black people. Their kids people. love black yeah. people. Their kids started. So yeah, this was yeah. their punishment by God was, yeah, you get to shoot a lot of black people legally, but your kids <laughs> are going to wear bucket hats and be really into breakdancing. Yes. yes. Yeah. That was the trade off. Yeah. Your kids are going to be so into 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That really is it. Yeah. Their, their children mm. acted so black that they would follow them around their own home <laughs> waiting for them to steal something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're just making a bowl of cereal and they're like, eh. Yeah, like right. I live, I live here. You pay for that? I live here, Dad. Yeah, he goes, no, you did. I'm your son. <laughs> okay, I watch you. I watch I you. I watch you. You come here, you never buy. <laughs> Dad, this is my home. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was their punishment. Their punishment is that because I've seen them in Koreatown. They drive. By the way, I've seen Koreans in Koreatown drive like 1.5 million dollar cars, like a lot of them. Yeah, and they live in it. <laughs> they live in a shack yeah. and they make they make sure to have that SL out front mm-hmm. and the whole family lives in it. Yeah, they live inside of a computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they pay for like they have they live in a living room and they have heated floors. They all sleep on the floor. Mm. And it just constantly smells like fish sauce in the house. And they don't take their shoes off. Or they put their they, they take their shoes off. So the house is clean. Mm-hmm. They all constantly swiffering. Constant swiffering. I don't know if this is real or not, but I believe no, it's, it's, real. it's very real. All my Korean friends, I had the same experience with all. And of them. I, I sold a lot of security systems around Koreatown. It's all the same type mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. And you don't know what the dad does. You don't know what he's up to. They're like, you have no idea what the whole family the whole, does. No one. No, the mom doesn't speak a lick of English, mm-hmm. and she refuses to learn over the course of fifty years. <laughs> yeah, there's a grandma you learn about five years after the fact. Yep. Yeah. She comes out of a trap door one day in the basement. And there's always a family member in town. Yes. There's always their grandparents like cycle out and they may become new grandparents mm-hmm. and they have new cousins. They and... have tag team visitors. Yep. Yeah, like they hit each other's hand on the way out the door. So it's like Parasite where there's like a double of them living under the house it and felt, they just come up. It and... did feel like that at times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything's very clean. Everything's febrezed. Everything's like tied to go. Like everything smells good except the house. <laughs> Because of the, the kimchi and stuff, which is a, 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 a delight. Mm-hmm. It's a delight. So they have problems with the odor due to pickling. Yes. Yeah. Whew. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, nobody even loves pickled stuff. Cut the, that out. The dads are essentially like they're like Chris Cooper from American Beauty, but like Korean. <laughs> like they, <laughs> they have, really they, are. They look straight ahead. There's zero relationship going on mm. with their with their. Son. A lot of Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Very Secret, yeah, okay. secretly gay, secretly, secretly gay, gay. Yeah. yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. shooting people in the street, just like the Koreans we see here. Yeah, yeah. All my Korean friends growing up, unless they were like loaded, loaded, like the family was loaded. 
The crazy rich Asians. The crazy, the fucking crazy rich Asians. These Asians are crazy rich. The rest of them, like, had very, very small houses, but three luxury vehicles in the driveway. Mm. I don't know. I would always see, I'd, I'd see them, like, uh, pulling up to, like, uh, like the boiling crap. Uh-huh. Someplace like that, and, like, a Mercia Lago, something I can't even pronounce. Mm-hmm. Pulling up to... And then dining, and then you go in the boiling crab, and it's just, there's no white people. It's just it's just Koreans and black people living in harmony at the boiling crab. That's the only hands. Yeah, that's that's the that was like the gang treaty that Tupac mm-hmm. organized mm-hmm. at the boiling crab. That's like the United Nations of Koreatown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. The two leaders of either side meet at the boiling crab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and then other than that, in Koreatown, it's just it's you go. They all, you know, or or in like La Crescenta and whatnot, they're all at like, you know, weird Korean places and they eat something that looks like eyes <laughs> and then you got to wait for the meat to come out, but you kind of like don't want to like insult them. So you, um, you eat the eyes. You, yeah. You eat the weird, like you know, whatever. They bring stuff to the table and you're not sure if it's food or not. Or just like a decorate. You have like no yeah. idea. Mm. Yeah. First time I saw rice paper, I'm like, am I supposed to wipe the table down with this? Like, what even is this? Yeah. And then it's it's delicious though. Mm-hmm. I'm dude. I'm so confused at Korean barbecue places because you can get the little bowl and then go get the shit from the bar. And I don't know if I'm eating like their equivalent of mustard. And I'm just yeah. like, mm, this is so good just on its own. Yeah. And I look like a retard just eating ketchup. Yeah. Mean, meanwhile, you're at a soap dispenser spraying it in a bowl. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're like, this goo, yeah. this damn Korean goo is so damn good. Yeah. Picking up those big plastic uh, rat contraptions yeah. with poison in them <laughs> that they put in the gardens outside yeah, of yeah, like yeah. the you're Outback eating, Steakhouse. Yeah. You're eating ant traps like they're clams. <laughs> yeah. Just sucking them. Just suck- <laughs> Oh, that, that little liquid. The little bullshit. liquid and trap. You're talking about. Yeah, you're yeah. just picking up and just sucking the juice mm-hmm. out, putting it back real quick. I would just go up to, I'd get a bunch of little bowls of like weird peas and canned things, mm-hmm. and I would just eat them. Yeah, all I, that's bullshit. You don't need to waste your appetite on that. Because when you go to Korean barbecue, you really got to like focus. I know, but I'm so hungry. I know, but and you the, just got to wait. one little slice of bulgogi. Every Korean that's what barbecue, they're trying to do. They wanna, that's what they do, Ben. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they purposely don't come to your table. They don't, you get all you can eat, but you got to fucking find this Korean lady. You got to like chase her around mm-hmm. like in a maze mm-hmm. just to get more because they want you to get full. They want more rice in your belly. Yeah. Never eat rice at Korean barbecue. Mm-mm. You're wasting your dollar. No, sir. Don't mm-hmm. even drink a beer at a Korean mm-hmm. barbecue because it'll fill your tummy up too much. This is more like Chipotle advice for yeah. the people out there. You go to Korean barbecue, you can fucking take these people to town, okay? <laughs> mm. Don't drink beer. Soju. Right. Rice wine. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make you as full. Yeah, the soju like really, literally like runs through runs, you. It like clears you out. Runs right through you. Yeah. You get that drunk hunger mm-hmm. later on in the meal. Mm-hmm. And if you can, smoke weed in the parking lot in between. Just say, you got it. Oh, I left something in my car. Smoke a little weed, get a new appetite going. You take them for everything they got. I like mm-hmm. that. Take them yeah. for everything they right. fucking you, got. You uh, eat until the guy who never comes out comes from the back and like kind of leans. He's like, you guys uh, eat a lot, huh? <laughs> but you can tell he's, he's going home. He's threatening about murdering you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then here's another trick for the people at home. They always give you a big, meaningless bullshit salad that mm-hmm. nobody wants. I'm not here to eat salad. Okay, so they charge you if you if you order meat and you leave it, mm-hmm. like if you don't eat all the meat, they'll charge you like like a, like a, a like extra a, like a yeah. lot. You, uh, well, like you left you to wasted the their meat back? you wasted their food. No, you always have to time it because you eat all the meat and then they come back. Do you want the more uh, intestine? And then you have to like be like, are we good? Can mm-hmm. we do this? Mm-hmm. You check in with everybody and then you order again. Yeah. But here's what you do. Okay. You, regardless, if you still want like a little bit more meat, like you're sick, you're almost vomiting, mm-hmm. you feel the food in your esophagus at this point, but you're like, I yes. could still do a little bit more. Yeah. You burp, a little flap of meat comes onto your tongue <laughs> yes. and you have to swallow it again. What you do, you just it doesn't matter all that extra beef. When they're not looking, you throw it under the salad. You hide it under the salad. Mm-hmm. Oh. Then you just leave. Yep. You get wow, the fuck out that's incredible. Mm-hmm. So it's like a covering your tracks in the old West. It's fun. When you're being hunted. It's fun. It's it is. It's like the hunt. That's yeah. great. You yeah. learned this from the Revenant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You learned it yeah. from an Inuritu. I learned it from a Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. They call me Lord Baltimore. <laughs> We That's hunt. amazing that you hide the meat under the oh yeah under the salad right. and like, then they they find it later great. like it's a scene out of a movie and they go Devin oh, like Scooby Doo yeah. oh those pesky whites <laughs> you know what I do when I'm to get my money's worth I pick up the big uh, bowl of water that everything's cooked in and I and I, and I just I drink, drink it like this so that it wash all over just me. boiling hot yeah yeah melting your mm-hmm. skin off. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. My favorite is because they always they want you to fill up on the corn and the kimchi and everything, mm-hmm. so they won't come for a while. And you go in hungry. They'll give you a thirty minute wait, and then you finally get the meat, and you're so hungry, you just like don't even like. Yeah. You don't even like cook it. No, I've like I've like felt some of the most annoyed with myself I've ever been is mm-hmm. I've been like, oh man, I, we only ordered two plates of meat. Yes. We all busted our nut on all this weird crap because mm-hmm. we were just hungry. Yeah. You, you just gotta... ate a bunch of catfish bait. <laughs> Ate a bunch of stink bait for catfish mm-hmm. instead of this delicious yeah. bulgogi. You ate the alien dinner from Galaxy Quest <laughs> that they give Alan Rickman. Yeah, yeah. love that yeah. movie. It's got little space bugs mm-hmm. and squids in it and yeah. stuff. Korean yeah. barbecue is great, but you got to be using the rice paper. You make little tacos and burritos Shh, out of it. I never even thought of doing you that. You take the rice pan. You've been doing it wrong forever. Okay. You ben, get, your glip. You, <laughs> you mean glip? Ben, your glip. Ben, your glip. You get the rice paper, maybe double it. Okay. Pour all the bagogi in it, wrap it around, put some kimchi on it too. Throw some kimchi on the grill. Hey, fucking have a time. <laughs> and then dip it in that sweet Korean barbecue sauce that mm. they have, you know? And then that's when it's that's how it's Korean barbecue. Otherwise, it's not every culture likes to pretend they were the first to put like beef over a flame. Uh-huh. You know, oh, you have to have Korean but no, you have to have Brazilian but it's all a cow retard over meat over a fire. Yeah, it's true. What makes it their thing is their sauce and their you gotta figure out a way to make it cultural yeah make it special i just realized i've been i've been ruling out korean barbecue for the past two years because two years ago i went to a hot pot place and it sucked the dick not a hot pot guy yeah don't do a hot which pot. is a totally different thing you no. don't even you can't even see what's in there yeah hot 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 pot is like eat like drinking out of a hot tub at a hotel yeah. yeah like that's disgusting that is pretty gross yeah. actually if you're sick it can be okay but like yeah it's it's uh, it's always a little odd i had a bad time it's always odd you don't want to go to those places where like they've said they're like a little too asian like they just name it like you know cold fungus feet <laughs> juice uh-huh. and you're like what yeah, yeah. who gets this severed foot severed <laughs> foot hot dog in severed leg <laughs> In broth. Yeah. <laughs> this is we call this Agent Orange name of our restaurant. <clears throat> yeah. I love Korean barbecue. Yeah. LA staple. What's the one to two moon barbecue in Koreatown? Yeah, that's always, a good one. It was always a really good Cheap-ish, one. Cheapish, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was the one where they brought you to me and you're like, this might be like from a dead homeless guy. Mm. I don't know. You really don't. <laughs> yeah. Like they bring you meat and it has yeah, like the, a ring the, and a they, dog tag in it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, well, it's nine ninety five, so yeah, all you can eat. Yeah, you're asked. You're like, was th- was this man uh, tortured before you killed him? <laughs> and you're like, oh, this is John McCain. <laughs> okay, interesting. I could taste the stress. <laughs> there are, by the way, there probably are tons of Asian people in the U.S. being like, uh, uh, who's the Death Wish guy? Death oh, Wish? Um, uh, uh, fuck something Bronson. Charles Bronson? I was going to say Charles Bronson, but isn't that the other no, dude? No, it's the other guy. Um, the guy from Jurassic Park. It's Action Jeff Goldblum. Bronson. Jeff Goldblum. It's Action Bronson. <laughs> yeah, Action Bronson. Yo, I hear you got a Death Wish. <laughs> gonna rape you on the pinball machine after I eat some Bucatina razor clams. <laughs> but regardless, I think there are probably Asian people do like cleaning up. Because their neighborhoods are very clean. Mm. And I think every night they... Uh, you know they do the rounds. They have suppressed the silencers on their on their Glocks, and they uh, they get Koreans? they get it done. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think a lot of these Asian communities this is just, that keep it very clean. Not right. a lot of homeless. I think they're going around and they're executing homeless people. They might. I don't really know what you're talking about because Koreatown's full of insane yeah, I was about people. To say, I was about to say, <laughs> Koreatown is like LA's asshole. Yeah, <laughs> it sucks, dude. I lived in Koreatown for a year. I've never been closer to blowing my brains mm-hmm. out than that month mm-hmm. in yeah. that year. Koreatown sucks. This it's Taylor terrible. Steakhouse is great. This but. footage we just watched. This is just them trying to open up parking spots. <laughs> Dude, Koreatown is such a piece of shit. Yeah, there's it's just, a valet. Yeah, dude, there's cars in Korea. There's, that's the valet. There's cars yeah. in Koreatown that haven't been moved in 50 years. Yep. You'll see like a Model T parked in front of yeah. a house yeah. in Koreatown. Yeah, you'll see a car being whose a spider now runs the car. <laughs> It's a big tarantula smoking a cigar. <laughs> but, but like, I ain't fucking moving, pal. Okay, but let's rule out Koreans. Chinese, they don't have any homeless. Chinese. <laughs> they don't have any homeless. Jace lives in a Chinese neighborhood. I don't want to out you. Yeah. I've, well, we talked about I live in Alhambra. Yeah. 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 
Which is China, and they're very Asian, and mm-hmm. you don't have any problems over there. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's more Pasadena, like, sleeping in Yeah, a that's, bit. that's Pasadena, yeah, man. Pasadena has, like, turret guns on, like, patrol cars. Jace lives in a Chinese... In Pasadena, ADT can kill people yeah. legally. <laughs> they have, like, yeah. Civil War Gatling guns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jace lives in a Chinese suburb. Yes. It's not... Chinatown's, like, you know, yeah, there's homeless people everywhere, too. Yeah. Jace lives by though. Well, I guess I'll oh, cut don't, that don't, out. Yeah, don't, please <laughs> cut that I'll out. I'll bleep it out. I'll bleep please, it out. Please cut. Give them my exact address <laughs> is what you just did. You so have to bleep that. I cannot I cannot be the first member of the podcast who gets killed by a fan. Uh, That'd be so brutal. You know what the problem with me is? Is I can't let their, I can't let the line be moved. If I step over the line, I go, well, there's no line now. Mm-hmm. I can go anywhere. Right. And That's then, always been my And then thing. you do the grin of like, maybe I stepped over it. <laughs> <laughs> you, go, you go, maybe I got you killed right now. Who knows? Yeah, like um, it's cute. Yeah. No, but living in Koreatown, another thing I hate about Koreatown is there's no parking in the entire city. If you live in Koreatown, you drive around the block for an hour at the end of your night yes. to find a spot. I literally would do that. I would get home from Mike's. I would. There was one time I drove around for 90 minutes before I found a spot. And I just said, fuck it. I'm going to double park and I'll get a ticket. And I just did that and like woke up at 7 a.m. the next day. Yeah. It's so bad. And there's also what people do is so they'll buy a beater car. And they'll drive their car to work. They'll move the beater car in a spot that's for two cars only, like can fit. They drive it right in the middle of the two spots. Oh, and then when they come back, they ram it from behind. Yeah, know. I've literally seen yeah. it like people just pushing their fucking Pinto yeah. ahead. Like, like bumper cars. Yes, literally. Koreatown parking so bad. Joey lived, Joe, when Joey first got out here, he lived in Koreatown and he had a car from Toyota mm-hmm. that he like bought. He kept That's getting so tickets. Terrifying, he didn't drive enough. You have to move it like every three or four days for fucking stri- uh, street mm-hmm. sweeping. And then you can never find another spot again. He was losing his mind. He he just gave his car back <laughs> in like a month. He just gave us. So he just didn't have a car. He was like, I can't take it. Yeah. Joey was getting like a boot put on his car and then a boot put on top of that boot. <laughs> this is why I've been fantasizing like a, I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to admit something to you guys because I have a baby on the way. Sure. Mm-hmm. You've been you threatening know. about leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really been getting me off like lately? What? If you send me a nice TikTok where like someone lives on a farm with a bunch of chickens. Oh, you're becoming, like, one, of, you're becoming uh, one of those guys. You're doing going, what yeah. am I doing living in this city with all this ho-hum? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much of this of this nonsense right. going on in the back. It's all, stinky. And... We all know what this the nonsense yeah. waves mean. <laughs> it's a bunch of ho-hum. You yeah. want to trade in the ho-hum for some humdrum. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Ooh, Ohio. <laughs> but literally, if you just send me like a TikTok where like a lady lives in Ohio and she's like, I have chickens in my backyard. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, what am I doing with my fucking yeah. life? Yeah, but she suffocated her children like yeah. weeks earlier yeah, yeah. in the pond in oh, the yeah, back yeah, 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 so yeah. she could tend to her chickens. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that same woman is like, you, she, you're jealous of her. And then two years later, she gets raped by the entire town <laughs> in Ohio because she showed it. She showed a tattoo in the town square. You're on TikTok, dude. You're literally on TikTok being like, get ready with me to feed my chickens in my small punk rock farm I created in Ohio. Yeah. And then it's her going about her day. And in the back, you can just see like a guy in a January 6th hat, like looking through her window, just planning to rape her to death. Yeah, yeah. In her little, yeah, I'm so tired of like the punk guys who are like, I'm, you know what? I was punk. Now I'm actually a farmer is what I am. Yeah. Yeah. I used to like smoke cigs and like play punk shows, and now I, I have a banjo, and I have a chicken. It gets boring. Yeah, come on. Yeah. You need that big city stuff. It is weird to go from like Gigi Allen to like, and Bingo was his name. Oh, yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Going but, from the Sex Pistols to Old McDonald mm-hmm. in a farm. Yeah, I don't know. But you know, sometimes you just think you go, yeah. Why don't I live somewhere where like. Like, why can't I go live in Alaska where uh, I might open the door one day with a fresh cup of coffee and a bear rips my head off, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. you know, where yeah. my kid can be safe. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't you want, what is it? Is it daylight or nighttime all, all, all the time in those places in Alaska? Daytime. It's daytime, like 18 hours, like for, mm-hmm. is it always day? I think there's a solstice and there's like yeah, one month it's all on day, the, one yeah. month it's all it's, night. It's crazy. What it's, a hell. Yeah. What an utter hell. The, the problem is though, since I'm becoming like this... <clears throat> Since I'm becoming a dad, it's becoming very dangerous to be alive, and I need I can't leave the house more than once or twice a week. Because like my dad, 
was listening to when he first became a dad. He was listening to Foghat way too loud in the truck. Mm-hmm. You know, he got hit by a train. Yeah, like yeah. The, the train like nicked like the back of his truck. Right. Yeah. By the way, he. T- I remember him telling us this story when we were little, and I was like, "That's scary." And then anytime we were in his tr- his truck and Foghat came on, he just cranked the shit out of it. <laughs> Slow ride. Yeah. And I, I literally remember as a kid turning, be like, "My ears hurt," and he's like, "Take it easy." <laughs> And, and I'm it, like, we're going to get hit by a train. That's always what dad did, where he acted like he didn't listen to music loud, because yeah. then that would fade on the radio, and then Frankenstein by Edgar I was Winter would about come to say, on, and, and he would did turn that up. To this day, I hate the song Frankenstein by the Edgar Winter band. Yeah. It, it was like we he, were in He's one, a seven-foot albino freak. It's the song that goes... And our, sure. our, dad, guitar hero, our shit. dad would play it at like Guantanamo Bay detainee like volume yeah. level. Yeah. It was horrific. Yeah. Well, he turned it up when you guys were in the car because he was like, maybe we'll all just die. <laughs> That's what maybe I'm we'll saying. all get clipped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And he started heading right for a train track. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. But I was uh I told you guys when I was in El Paso like two weeks ago, I got in a rental car and as soon as I, I turned the ignition on, I was going to pick up Katie from the hotel and Midnight Rider by the Almond Brothers band came on. Mm-hmm. I literally went, Oh <laughs> fuck. I go, God damn. Yeah. yeah. I turn it up, I was like, Whoa! Yeah. Baby, <laughs> having a dad, I am <laughs> a dad <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> yeah, that song. Like can't I had make never a, heard the song before. Yeah, make a dad like actually come. It's like a Sibian mm-hmm. for dads. Well, they, you said the message of the song is literally like a man running from all responsibility. Mm-hmm. No, the message of the song is literally like a guy being like, "Well, I got one dollar, <laughs> and I can just, I can just midnight, I can just leave." Yeah, yeah. It's an ultimate dad fantasy. The ultimate dad fantasy. Yeah. It like fuck it, dude. I've never. I felt like I, like a phoenix. It was mm-hmm. crazy. I was like yeah. transformed, and then. Uh, last night I'm going to hit balls at the driving range because we're playing on Thursday in a big match, yeah. and uh, we're filming a big uh, YouTube too. golf match yeah. for the fans. It'll be yeah. fun, and uh, I I can't stop listening to Midnight Rider by the Almond Brothers Band, and mm-hmm. I was listening to it too loud, and I literally almost got killed by a fire truck. Yeah, under an overpass, and I almost got fucking t boned bad. And what's funny is I told you guys this the same day, like three hours prior, I was driving. I also started Wellbutrin this week, so I'm just like freaked out. <laughs> I've literally been on like a hairy... I'm having a kid. You're an antidepressant. Yeah, I'm having... You're having a kid. I'm trying desperately to not kill myself <laughs> as I turn 33. Cheers. To, cheers. The therapy didn't work. Cheers to OP. So now I need pills. Here's to the best podcast ever. <laughs> Wolfpack. Yeah. Woo. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. just leave me hanging. That's fine. What do you tag is dreaming? Um, yeah. So I'm on Wellbutrin, which is literally like it's it's kind of like Adderall. So I'm, I've literally been driving around like Henry Hill at the end of Goodfellas, mm-hmm. like just looking up at the sky for helicopters. And sh- I'm not <laughs> yeah, even getting it's the Goodyear blimp. You're yeah. like, I think it's following me. <laughs> Dude, I've had like 15 minute drives to like the golf course, and I've just like been going into like a freak out out of nowhere. So I was driving home from the driving range. I almost got hit by a fire truck. Same exact way as you. I almost got T-boned, but it was because I was I was I'm not joking, I was playing the Indigo Girls too loudly. Oh, really? Yeah. Which song? I was playing that like I went to the doctor. I went to the mountains. I spoke to the children. I planted the flowers. I know. This is like the it follows of being killed by fire trucks. Uh, it's weird, right? Your whole family. You guys can't wait to be T-boned. Trains, mm-hmm. fire trucks, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Unbelievable. We had a... a <clears throat> we had, our, 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 uh, our granddaddy's brother, he was like on his way to AA and he got ran over by an 18-wheeler. No, he was on a motorcycle. He got decapitated by an 18-wheeler. Yeah. Yeah. Did he live? Yeah, he was... <laughs> <laughs> he actually... And Devin, he became the mayor of the town. <laughs> He was the mayor of the town, and his head was the comptroller. I think. I think there was another. Uh, there was another because uh, he had like back then you had like fourteen brothers and sisters. It was like a litter of puppies where you go. That one uh, stuck its head in the outlet. Mm-hmm. That one fell off a cliff. Like, that one. That one got ate by his brother when he was in there. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, and the women <laughs> and the women in the old west have 19 nipples like a dog yeah that they all just feed at at well, one you, time <laughs> <laughs> they just they they lay on their side and they ring a big yeah. dinner bell and they go <laughs> and then all these uh texas a&m fans just come running <laughs> like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> just ninth 
<laughs> 19 children who look like who look like Coach Buddy Ryan from Last Chance U. Go, hoo, hoo, hoo. And she's like, knock him out, lit. Take out your dick before uh, you sit. All right, don't don't get dipped by mommy's titty. <laughs> Kids, and the, kids chewing dick. Yeah. And there's one like actual skinny one in the back, and he, they're like, "All right, you're gonna get eaten by the others. You don't get one of these teats, Jeremiah." Dude, my dad started dipping when he was nine. Yeah. And then he like he was allowed to drive the truck, and he had like a big chaw in, and he drove through someone's house, he drove literally through their entire house, and, like yeah. totaled this truck when he was like nine. When he was a little kid, yeah. Oh His dad's God. like, "What happened?" And he was like, "I'm nine. I'm nine." I'm nine years Dude, old. Dude, he was literally like the kid from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou who like crashes through the barn. <laughs> like he was saying, I, I got a G-O... Fuck, I can't even think of it. Yeah, it's like... The, it's like those are like Great Depression era stories. Yeah. Like the kid had to drive at seven and you know... Yeah. So he's using a cane to hit the accelerator and then mm-hmm. he drives through the we, general we store. We had one oh. great aunt. I never met her. She uh, she was uh, five foot tall. She weighed 300 pounds. And she, she, she lived in a mobile home. And to get around her mobile home, she had a series of lazy boys going from the living room to the kitchen. And she would hop lazy boys to get into the kitchen, make a sandwich. She had like a lazy boy... <laughs> In front of the fridge. Oh, she like played, make a, she, she, she like was, had a contraption where she yeah. could pull the lever and it would shoot her into <laughs> yeah. the other one. She's playing the floor as exercise. <laughs> She's playing. Yeah. You know that puzzle game? <laughs> yeah. You know that puzzle game where you have to move the cars around to like park a f- yeah. fire truck? That yeah. was her like apartment. Her trailer. And she would just ho- she'd hop like Hubert. From lazy boy to lazy boy, get in front of the fridge and then make a sandwich, and she'd hop back to the living room. And she, my dad said, she would change the channel by just jamming her cane at the TV, hitting that big, hitting hit that yeah. big uh, dial, hitting the it. hitting the big dial. And she gave away like uh, a ton, like thousands and thousands of dollars, her entire savings to uh, this some televangelist, yeah, like Billy Graham or some shit, mm-hmm. some guy who was like, if you send me five hundred dollars, I'll kill Freddie Mercury right now. <laughs> If you send me $500, I'll give the great Freddie Mercury AIDS for being gay. <laughs> and she's like, well, God damn it, let me, let me hop over to my lazy boy where I keep my money. She has her money buried in a lazy boy in a coffee can. Now let me send it to that nice preacher man. He's going to kill all those gays. Dude, so like my granddaddy had like another brother who got hit by an 18 wheeler, but Dude, he was- what is he was, going on? He was Your family, a, it's like Frogger. <laughs> No, truly. It was, uh, he was on his way to AA and I think in like a slug bug, like the, you know, it's basically like a coffee can, you know? No, he was on a motorcycle. The, the, he had another brother that died. Fuck, I forgot about this and one. This guy like got sober and he was going to AA and he pulled off into the lane to, cause you know on Texas free, it's like a freeway and then you can just drive over a tiny little bullshit road to get going the other way on the freeway. Yeah. 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 It makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Texas freeways have like a stop sign in the middle of them out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was on one of those and he was turning left to go into AA and this 18 wheeler behind him clipped him and pushed him into traffic on the other side and he got ran over by an 18 wheeler and just like disappeared. Yeah. He he died. (laughs) So no, Devin, he was the doctor of that same tank. (laughs) And he operated on himself. Yeah. Yeah. The human molecule, they call (laughs) him. They're like, we found his brainstem in one of his eyes. We put it in a pickle jar. <laughs> we said it at the fair. Uh, yeah, so that that also that aunt, the really big aunt, apparently, she lived to like 93 somehow. Because that's the thing with the Averys is God won't let us die. <laughs> even though we all want nothing more than, than to be dead. Yeah. It's like in the worst diets of like our granddaddy going, dude, bacon and eggs for every meal, no mm, matter what. Yeah. Drink the grizzle, eat fucking eating, steak. Eating a cigarette sandwich for breakfast. Mm. Um, Health problems, at least. Yeah, like nine stints, oxygen right, machine, but shit, still yeah. make it to your late 80s. Yeah, right? not going down. And it's like, it's almost like some, you know, a serious man, like we killed a Jewish guy in the 1700s and he cursed us. Yeah. yeah. He's like, you will want to mm. die. Your entire life, but never you. God won't take you. No, we're at the end of some weird fable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 
It, it, it ends with us having a podcast for some reason. Yeah, I guess that's... We broke the curse. Yeah. yeah. We finally broke the curse. Wow. God, it mm. never ends, these stories. Oh, we yeah. Had, we had... We, I forget that. You guys get a <clears throat> new retarded family member every episode. Mm. I mean, for a while, every year. Yeah. <laughs> just add a new one. It's like retarded gerbils or <laughs> like rats just reproducing in this tar attic. I know. And there's also extended family members we never met. Like, uh, we talked about that one episode, the roaches tried to reach out to us. That's right. That's yeah. right. The long lost roaches. The long lost yeah. roach. They wrote us a letter and shit <laughs> on a piece of cardboard. We're living on one side of a catamaran. Yeah. I've been eating old stamps from the post office <laughs> for months. We're somehow shipwrecked in land. <laughs> Hello, we're your relatives, the dumbest motherfuckers who ever lived. <laughs> yeah. It honestly ruled. <laughs> I'm so glad the first 15, I know we talk about this all the time, the first 15 years of my life, I was just surrounded by old guys wearing like fucking by district football championship rings from 1957. Mm hmm. Just going like, yeah. we had, there was a guy at our church, he'd give you candy, but he had no fingers on his hand. Mm -hmm. So he had to take the candy out of his weird, <laughs> fucked up, no hand fing yeah, no finger. Out of hand. his web. Yeah. So, hey, come get this little fudge, uh, fudgy thing out of my web. <laughs> come get it, little one. Yeah, because I think a rattlesnake ate all his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the true story. A rattlesnake bit all his fingers oh, and it fell off. But, dude, with our DNA and everything, mentally, I feel like I'm always walking uphill. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to read all the time. I have to constantly be thinking so I don't become the dumbest, like, most retarded motherfucker to ever walk the planet. Yeah. yeah. If I let my guard down for, like, a week, I'd die. I'd for sure stop breathing in my sleep. Yeah. I would get, like, sudden infant death syndrome, like, in my 30s. I, I mean, get, like, SIDS. Yeah, I yeah. mean, me, I'm like, I was, like, literally, like, every, like, I've told you guys, like, last year, I was like, man, if I had X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, and F, then I'd finally be happy. And then I literally got all those things in a year, and I'm like, fuck, I still want to die. <laughs> all right, I'll take the piss. <laughs> Give me the pills to change my brain, please. You're taking the one, though, that, because when I think of Wellbutrin, I think of that little rainbow thing under that weird uh, bottle of vitamins, where it starts from, like, red, yellow, purple, all the way to, like, yellow. I'm taking the... Like a multivitamin. It's the, it's the least cuck antidepressant you can take. In my, like, in my head, it's it's like vitamin C. There's like Prozac and Lexapro, which which just make your dick not work anymore. Mm -hmm. I took it in college, and I almost ripped my dick off trying to come once mm -hmm. in like a three-month period and make you yeah. really fat. This was yeah, like, it turns you into an Indian guy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't really know what that means, but sure. Man. Indian guys just, I mean, they're... I, t I told you guys, like, Coomers, the, the Coomer meme needs to change. And we'll get back to your thing real quick. But the Coomer meme, I hate that it's a white guy. Mm. We're taking White guys are taking the fall for being the horny guys that masturbate all the yeah. time. We're one of the least horny races. Indians, I want to put that out there Indians, right now. You, you yeah. make a good point. Indians, Indians are much better at being white people than white people are. They're <laughs> statistically richer than we are, yeah. and they're hornier than we are. That's true. Yeah. 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 Indian guys, I imagine all and they're day. they're better at assault. All day, Indian guys are at home trying to rip their own cocks off. They're masturbating so much. Every day they wake up, they look down at their cock that they glued on the night before, and they rip. <laughs> yeah. They sit down at the computer and they rip it off. That's because mm -hmm. they think it's lamb. <laughs> but anyway, Jess, I, I derailed it, but I, that's been pissing me off about white guys taking the fall. They can't, white guys can't take the fall for everything. It's a it's a very valid We're not point. even close mm -hmm. to being the mm -hmm. horniest guys on the mm -hmm. internet. Mm -mm. Not even close. No. Yeah. We do not masturbate the most. That is definitely not true. Mm -mm. Not true at all. White guys, it's no. it's, it's Indian guys. I mean, there's Indian, the guys treat, Indians, Indian guys treat Instagram like it's a turkey shoot. Like yeah. they're just trying to dive on a body. <laughs> Indian guys leave. I'm not the first person to say, but Indian guys leave comments on like, Girls' Instagrams that sound like the guys in Taken on the boat. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'll, I'll find you, I'll kill you, I'll rape you. Sexy babe. While doing Uber. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah while on, on like the interstate. Mm -hmm. They're picking you up from LAX and they're like, hold on one second. And then they're, <laughs> they're telling a woman that they're going right. to find him and kill him. Right. They're like, you see this girl? I'm going to kill her. And I'm going to rape her dead body. Cut friend. off her ears and put them in a Vitamix and blend it up into a, and form it into a pussy. 
Yeah. Fuck that. Fuck that. See what I, my cousin, he give me rhino horn. If I snort it, it give me boner. <laughs> Big boner, my friend. Anyway, 58th and the third race. Okay. <laughs> Money don't grow on trees, right. and then mouths to feed, and then cows to feed, and then nothing in this world for free. Dude, have you listened to Cage the Elephant? The, I love Cage the Elephant, I love the Black Eyed Peas. Those are my two favorite bands. Same. I only listen to music on Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004. <laughs> okay, here we Th- go. That stays in the ad. Okay. After years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, what is the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. Mint Mobile actually sent me a card so I could switch over to their service, and I thought it was great. Why do you have to go to this stupid cell phone provider to get a plan when you can just, you know, it's like car dealerships. Like, why do we have to go to a car dealership to buy a car? I'd rather just buy it directly. Good point. Um, The service has been great. I've noticed, like, it's just exactly the same as, like, a big Mm -hmm. carrier. Um, so I recommend switching over if you want to save money. Um, for anyone who hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family, and at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with a limited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash lemon. That's mintmobile.com slash lemon. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash lemon. I, and we all use it, and Mint Mobile really rocks. Yeah, my it dad has it, rules. and it's like way better than my service, honestly, yeah. mm-hmm. and way cheaper. You should switch. I, I think I will. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll get them to send you another card. So Okay, cool. Yeah. And they'll ship it right to your door so you don't have to go into some stupid mm-hmm. mall somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know? Full of a bunch of people that were just at a rave. Yeah, exactly. And they're all like <laughs> hydrating with yeah. smart water. Yeah, ear gauges everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, get them to talk you into like the cheapest plan you can get. Just go to mintmobile.com. Use the promo code LEMON. Thanks, Mint Mobile. Thank you. Hey guys, it's time to put the brakes on takeout. Get out of the drive through and get into HelloFresh. They send pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes straight to your door. Skip the trip to the grocery store and make a home-cooked meal in half the time. HelloFresh makes meal planning a total breeze. Just choose your weekly recipes, pick your delivery date, and wait for your ingredients to arrive. Guys, we all got HelloFresh last week. What did you think of it? I loved it. It was delicious. And uh, it's very easy, and they just tell you exactly how to make it, and it's all fresh food. And I uh, I, ha- I had, like, an amazing meal. It was It was, it was delicious. Nu- nutritious as, as all heck, and my pregnant wife loved it. And I, the, mm-hmm. the, the baby was tossing and turning yeah. and then slept soundly. They sent me a bunch of pork, and I just ate it out of a bowl, and I thought it was, like, some of the best pork I've ever eaten out of a bowl. Mm-hmm. But if you also follow, they send you a bunch of ingredients, so I just kind of, you know, I'm freestyling you it. You can do whatever you want. Or you yeah. can follow their rules and make like a meal that would shock people in your shock life. Shock people. Yeah. Yeah. If you're you have a, a chef woman, all of a sudden. A woman you're trying to bone or impress or a man. <laughs> but but if you don't listen to Ben and follow their directions yeah. and cook a beautiful succulent meal, you know, maybe you might get a, a little bit of a, a dome, you know, mm-hmm. for the night. Mm-hmm. So no more searching on food blogs for what you can cook at the last minute. With HelloFresh, you'll always be prepared. At a price point that's 25% cheaper than takeout. Those expensive trips to get a mediocre bro- a mediocre burger will be a thing of the past. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Lemon and use code 50Lemon. That's 5-O-Lemon for 50% off free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 5-0-Lemon and use the code 5-0-Lemon for 50% off plus free shipping. Get HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Thank you, HelloFresh, and back to the show. Bye. Bye. Uh, but anyway, you're on Lexapro, or no. you didn't go on Lexapro. No, Lexapro. Prozac and Lexapro are the ones where it's like just they make you really fan your dick not work. This is like 
basically like legal cocaine. So it just gives you like tons of energy and makes you like not want to eat and shit. Nice. And I've been mm. feeling pretty good. I've also been I've been kind of spaced out and uh you know Well there's I, an adjustment period. There's to all an adjustment these things, period. Right? I've, yeah. I've been getting insanely angry. I've literally like seen people in, in line at stores and they like screw up the checkout and I just think about just bashing their fucking <laughs> Like whatever I've had, like I was at my my Aldi as I've talked about, and there was like an Asian lady. She's trying to do a coupon that's like you know she drew it basically. Yeah, and it like made the line like a minute longer, and all I could think about was just like fucking, <laughs> like once upon a time in Hollywood, just into the phone machine, just over and fucking over again. Yeah, but in that I feel great. <laughs> so it's giving you the energy to uh, be rageful. It's it's taken away my depression, and I figured out underneath that I hate everyone and want to be really violent which does help me. yeah rage helps keep you alive rage helps keep you alive Devin. You know? i've always said this yeah helps yeah. you push that rock up the hill yeah it's it is it's good i think it clears out the the arteries and whatnot mm-hmm. yeah it's good makes it helps you sleep yeah you're so all tired I'm, when you go to bed because you've been pissed mm-hmm. off all day yeah mm-hmm. so i need i need a little i'll never be happy or normal but I, there's a little pill that can turn me from a depressed fag into Uncle Stan. So yeah. I'm going to take like that. that pill. Yep. I like yeah. that. Yep, you give people heart attacks. Exactly. You don't get them now. In, in a month's time, when it's really kicked in, I'm going to be going into Dunkin' Donuts and just screaming at people for no reason. Or then I'm bored. <laughs> you turn into you have start having a Boston accent out yeah. of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I start chain smoking in your house while the baby's here. I love that for you, though, dude. Yeah. Because we're both going through some really big changes right now, and shit's about to get weird. Mm-hmm. Very weird. Imagine me three months of no sleep. We might not have jobs come April. Oh, oh no. Man. No. I'm sorry, boys. You'll be all right. I couldn't imagine you any more retarded than you already are. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's... <laughs> well, that's why I'm saying. Be, we're going to reach a new level. Yeah. 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 It's going to be like the like the deep oil like rigs where they somehow go another layer into the Earth's crust of being retarded. Yeah. Ben's going to be no sleep, and my girlfriend will have moved in with me, so I'm going to be no gooning for three months, and mm. we might just both get weird. Man. No gooning, no sleep. Yeah, what's going to happen to both of us, dude? I'm kind of worried. You're not going to be able to jack off anymore. Or, I'm not going to know what time it is. Yeah. Worst case scenario, we kill our families. Yeah. Who cares? Come on. We have a break, and we shoot all our loved ones. There's always a solution. <laughs> Just listen to the fucking Midnight Rider. Our, uh, our, uh, our friend, I don't want to name him because I don't know if I'm. A, I, he want me to say his name, but our mm-hmm. friend Bill told us. Cosby. Yeah, Bill Cosby. <laughs> our friend had, he had twins, and by the time they were like four years old, he confessed to his wife that for like a year he's been obsessed with killing them and, ki- and killing the wife. I didn't know this. And then killing himself. <laughs> and he was so obsessed with this thought that he like he told her to call the police because he was afraid he was going to kill all of them. What? Jesus. Yeah. And this guy was a deacon in a church. Can Wait, you believe that? You know, this some, guy was a God-fearing. Some, was this our dad? <laughs> 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 That's insane. I'm going to ask you who that is after because I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah. Well, good thing I didn't say the name because I thought you knew that too. But yeah, he wanted to uh, he wanted to chop them up into little pieces with like uh, gardening equipment or something. <laughs> But, uh, you know, thank God he uh, they called the police and the police showed up and killed all of them. Mm. Poli- the police showed up and opened fire yeah. right through the door. Mm. Black family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's if you're a black dad yeah. who can't take it anymore. You just call the police on your own family. <laughs> <laughs> they, they take care of the problem for you. Yeah. <clears throat> Wow. You call, you yeah. say hello, 911. I created black children and they're like, we'll, we'll be right there. <laughs> we'll be right there. We'll be right there. Oh man, but yeah, he uh, luckily he didn't kill anybody though, and I think he's still like in uh, a place where they send people that uh, have thoughts like that. He went to a place, yeah. Where, where, he just where they did it you. for that fun little vacation mm-hmm. they send you. He wanted that little Dixie cup with the pills in it. Yeah, who doesn't want yeah. that? He you doesn't like little paper cups I want... to put ketchup in. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to sit around in a circle and beg to watch the World Series. <laughs> I love to get tortured by a big, big evil nurse, dude. I would love. be great. I would love to go in an insane asylum now because now they're packed to the gills with all these like really hot TikTok ladies with huge cans who True. think they're schizophrenic mm-hmm. that keep admitting themselves into these. Uh, like the state can't handle all these people who think they're like they have multiple personalities and the, it's the the BBD hottest people pussy. you've ever seen are all at mental institutions. Yeah, now. well, it's because they all think it makes them like interesting. 
I don't even think. I don't even think these people are Obviously. smart enough to hear Obviously. voices. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Kid Cudi yeah, really did a number on, on these people. I know. You listen to, you listen to one Lana Del Rey yeah. album and you're like, I'm going to take my huge titties and I'm going to be institutionalized. <laughs> I'm going to take my perfect wet pussy and my huge, great, awesome tits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to wear a robe and take piss. And then an ugly lady with A cups is like, um, I, I have. And they go, shut the fuck up. <laughs> they go, nobody cares about you. <laughs> and you're stupid pussy. Uh, yeah. No, I do. I do love the guys who are like, I can't take modern life. So, you know what? A nice three months where I'm just shuffling around in a robe. Yeah, and, kind of staring out a window. And but now, I if don't you know do it. that, you get a bunch of weird, colorful pills and uh, like PlayStation and TV and cards. And there's tons of great pussy there. Now, the best thing that can happen to you is you either like go to prison or you lose your mind and go completely insane and go mm-hmm. to a mental institution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all the nurses are ratchets. They're all awesome. Yeah, they're all just these ladies that fucking ride the bus and they got Jordans on and they, tattoos mm-hmm. in places they shouldn't and they fucking. Yeah, they have like Kenyan Martin tattoos on their neck. <laughs> I'm sure they can get you. I'm sure they can get you anything you want. They get you anything you want. Anything you no want. No more home life for you. <laughs> you get time for fun. Take your colorful pills. Yeah. Here's your nurse uh, who looks like an LSU women's basketball player. <laughs> yeah. I imagine all the nurses are just smoking like PCP and you're just like playing. It's the self care bullshit. We, we, o- we opened up the floodgates so now everyone could just say they're having like, you know, well, de- not, that, th- these thoughts and then they. Well, now people can't like actually get help they need because these places are. I imagine it's just, it's droves of like, I imagine a mental institution now, it's just like, it's someone goes like, do you have an outlet over there to charge your ring light? I gotta charge my ring light. That's all it is. Because they're doing makeup tutorials yeah, on TikTok. That's all and it they is. gotta still make their money. Mm. Like, you, I gotta send a selfie to Chris D'Elia. Do you mind if I charge <laughs> my ring light? <laughs> Do you mind? Do you mind? Yeah. No, I mean, I've, we've been, our mom worked for one of these places for like 13 years. I remember going there and it's just like. Yeah, God forgot about all these people, mm-hmm. and he's never coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but they're also a lot of them are geniuses. They are geniuses, but in the way of like they find really creative ways to hang themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's how they're geniuses. Yeah, yeah. One guy hang, hung himself with like booty shorts. There was one guy. I don't know if I talked about this on the podcast, but he uh, tr- he tried to hang himself with his pants, so they took his pants away, <laughs> and he had to wear short shorts. Like, you know, like hot girl short shorts. Yeah. And he, fi- he figured out a way to hang himself with that. Somehow. I don't know how you do that. Wow. Yeah. With like Richard Simmons shorts, he hung himself. Yeah. Good for him. I know. There's always a way. Everyone out there, I want everyone to know. I know. There's always a you're, way. You're the Kobe for <laughs> killing yourself. <laughs> when I don't get like. Wake up at 4 a.m., yeah. I come up with, with ways. Yeah. I wake up at 4 a.m., I put up one shot and it's through my brain. <laughs> Can you just kill yourself by like holding your breath? I never got it. No. Can you just go? Maybe oh. if you're really dumb. Yeah. That's how you drown. A Burt Kreischer fan. You drown. Fan's you good. hold your breath. Yeah, but there's a bunch of stuff around you not letting you. Sure. Breathe. No, that's only if you sink to the bottom of the ocean. Otherwise, you're fine. All right. Yeah. I guess you solved it. <laughs> you can't drown in a bathtub. It's not deep enough. Yeah, you can. Oh, you well, can. a bathtub you actually can. Yeah. No, yeah. I know. Obviously, you can. Yeah. Yeah. It would be funny to drown in a. So if you if you're in prison, you want to kill yourself. You could drown yourself in a glass of water. You stick your nose down in the glass and just hold your breath. Uh, yeah, I mean maybe. I don't know. Yeah, because then when you suck in air to breathe, it all goes in your lungs and you die. Or you can kill yourself like Aaron Hernandez. Do like a little three stooges yeah, hanging. Yeah, you could like Crisco the floor yeah. and yeah. shit. Do be a like, hanging where you're going whoop 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 <laughs> the whole time. You could also just kill yourself by doing a front flip and landing on your neck. Yeah. That's true. You could just keep telling people you're practicing <laughs> for something. Why are you giving the hands like hey, this? Hey, that one's for free. <laughs> like yeah. you're saying some Steve Harvey relationship wisdom. Nobody's ever thought of that. Do a backflip and land yeah. on your head. Think like a lady, kill yourself like a man. Yeah. And people won't even know if you're trying to kill yourself or if you were trying to do some weird like Matrix run up the wall shit. Yeah. Because you're just, you have autism. I would kill myself yeah. just doing the belt choke sex thing, obviously. Yeah, I'd go out that way too. Probably. Yeah, because you want to have like one last. Yeah. Also, so hurrah. like my friends and family aren't sad. They're just like, oh, he was just really horny. And yeah. He messed yeah. up, you know? Yeah. There's no like, oh, we could have, you know, we should have reached out or something. Oh, by the way, and I I would never kill myself the way Anthony Bourdain did it. 
like a bitch. So cringe. You never date a pedophile and then be, <laughs> go, go along with a movement. On, yeah, get cucked on publicly. On CNN, get cucked publicly. Like, nope, never would do that. And then send her a bunch of yeah. pussy ass text messages mm-hmm. at 3 a.m. But and then hang yourself. At the end of the day, he loved it and out. Mm-hmm. Never, by the way, to this day, never seen someone eloquently explain why he kicked ass. Never have seen it once. People share photos of him and he has like an earring and it's in black and white and they go, he was a legend. They're like, he was a legend. Yeah. What I loved about him was he was old, but he wasn't fat. <laughs> and that means he's cool. If he was fat, it would be a whole different story. Oh, they, they, would, they would be cheering. They'd be banging pots together mm-hmm. when he killed himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you fat pedophile <laughs> lover. I mean, I even love his his text messages are so fourteen year old kid before he killed himself. What were they? Oh, I don't know. He's, he's just he's what, texting what he's texting the lady who was the pedophile who cucked mm. him, and he's just like, "You you embarrass me," and she's like, "LOL, pussy, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> she really would respond. Like I that? mean, I'm being a little comedic, <laughs> but I think she was literally. He's like, "You've cucked me publicly." She's like, "Will you leave me alone?" Mm-hmm. And he's just like, well, like literally like a teenager, just being like, "Say my dick is above is it above average though? Like, tell me for real." <laughs> Or were you lying? And she's like, it was average, and then he just hung himself. Yeah. <laughs> They're all public record. You can go look them up. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will. Do you want me to look this. them up? Or? No, no, it feels a little disrespectful on the yeah, show. Let's just, I, let's just keep watching these Korean shoot this black This is a people. great image. Oh, this has been in pause the whole time. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even realize this that. This is the school shooter jump man logo right here. <laughs> the Korean guy walking across the street, pulling a trigger. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Bourdain... I tend to, I kind of agree, Ben. I'm not really sure. I never understood why I was supposed to be like, the guy goes on vacation. Like, don't right. we all want to go on vacation? He would have some thoughts when he went, but at the end of the day, he? he's, eating, he's eating, you know, chicken saute or whatever the fuck. Did he have some thoughts? Uh, what are the thoughts? He's Pla- places those, are different. Was people the, are different. Yeah, and he also did the classic fucking chef thing where they like really condescendingly eat fast food and they, you know, they pretend like they're the only person that understands like the depth and beauty of chili fries mm-hmm. and that we're all just like retards. Well, how about how about this? How about you go to a place and you tell me it stinks? Don't some places stink? Go to a place and be like, I would never go to Cambodia. It sucks dick. Yeah. yeah. That would be yeah. cool if, if Anthony Bourdain in Cambodia was like, man, this Kissinger guy knew what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> this place stinks. This place stinks. B.O. Yeah. That's an honest guy. A guy that go, he travels the world and he goes, we don't need a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. A guy that <laughs> does a whole episode in India and at, at the end of it, he looks into the camera and he goes, yeah, not for me. Yeah. Not for me. Not a big fan of any basket you open being full of cobras. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, listen, traveling's cool, but um, everything smells like shit, and I can see a guy raping someone behind the camera. So I don't like this place. <laughs> his cameraman's getting raped. Yeah, his cameraman's getting raped, and he's got to be like, the the art of travel, it, it's like a lighthouse for the soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got to be in, yeah, he's got to be in Shanghai at some booth, you know, eating like fried scorpions in a... Yeah, Mexican Coca Cola, and be like, "This is something you can't get." In, yeah, and Beverly. Wood. Also, you know what really pisses me off too? He steals sober valor. Wasn't sober. He drank. Yeah, he drank. Yeah, that's not being sober. Oh at all. yeah, he pretended because he wasn't on heroin, heroin. that he's yeah. sober. Yeah, he's still getting trashed. Yeah, yeah, ripping six. Yeah, he was like yeah, again uh, drunk. He was, he was a big drunk. Yeah, right? he was yeah, a big booze head. Yeah, enough. Not sober. Oh, yeah, because you stop doing the best thing that also could kill you quicker. Yeah. Wait, so you still drink? What? And he yeah. also, he was a heroin addict like a hack. He was just like a teenager. He's like, I'm, I'm like Keith Richards. I'm cool. <laughs> that's what I hate about him is he wanted to be cool his whole fucking life. Yeah. yeah. And that's so retarded. Yeah. Because that's yeah. literally just like looking around and going like, oh, what does everybody say I should do? I'll do that. That's like what mm. being cool is. He also had two fucking kids. And he killed himself. And he killed so himself when they were you. when they so were little you. kids. When they were little kids. Fuck you. And yeah. then and then half that documentary is about like how he didn't have enough time to spend with his kids and the traveling and all that. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, then you killed yourself over some young strange. I know. You dipped. Who was a pedophile? Who, Who fucked w- kids? Was a pedophile, and you were on CNN like every night, like promoting the Me Too movement, and then you found out your wife was fucking, you know. Your fu- your your wife was uh, drilling school children. Mm-hmm. She was getting railed by uh, mm-hmm. by a uh, uh, pubeless yeah. uh, uh, boy. Your wife's over here raping McLovin, <laughs> and you're on CNN acting like men are pigs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so true, dude. I'm sick of the Anthony love. All I see, I don't see a single criticism of the dude. It drives me up a wall. 
It drives me up a. a There's always, it drives me up he a has, wall. He has those quotes where they, that they give to like great novelists. Mm-hmm. Like they people will have like him on their fridge, and it's him, and he's sitting, you know, in Joshua Tree, and he's holding like a scotch, and he's looking at the camera, and it'll just say like, "Live, drink, have fun." Yeah, have sex like just like a like a shitty Henry Miller quote. Mm-hmm. There was one you said, yeah, and it's also oh, by the way the quote's always by Mark Twain, and then it's just like misattributed. He did, yeah. yeah, and he just kind of like stole a Mark yeah, Twain yeah. quote, and you're there's, like, what's there's, so interesting about that? There's one you said the group chat where it's just him. It's yeah, it's him in a chair in a desert. It's like you know, stay up too late drinking. You know, call in sick to work because you're hungover. Eat shitty Chinese food. Go to Mardi Gras. Yeah, like all these type of like declarative. And then I was like, yeah, it should end with date a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be really gay about it. Yeah. Kill yourself when your life rules. If you here's the thing, if you committed suicide, you we, your life advice is mute on everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It's also very basic. Yeah, it's, it's also very basic, like like uh, hedonistic life advice masquerading as deep. Yes. Oh, half the people that want to like like listen to that are dead because <laughs> they ate too much Chinese food and drank whatever they wanted and did whatever they wanted. Yeah. So you know. Not whatever. I don't know. He. I don't. I, every time I've tried putting on a show, I'm like incredibly bored. I just don't get. I don't want to watch a guy have like you killed yourself because what you had too much vacation time. <laughs> Your I mean, show about vacation. How about this? Okay, everybody says we're haters, but how dull do you have to be to watch a guy eat calamari and talk mm-hmm. about it? Yeah. How how dull is yeah, your life to be a, Go mm-hmm. eat calamari yourself. Yeah, to be at home and be like, honey, honey, Anthony, he's in he's in Hamburg right now. <laughs> you go there. Yeah. You go there. You do something. Yeah. I'm yeah. more of a somebody feed Phil guy. <laughs> yeah. Somebody feed Phil is the greatest television <laughs> owner. Anthony Bourdain for <laughs> mentally retarded people. <laughs> who, who, who are you talking about? Phil Rosenthal. Uh, he like co-created uh, yeah. like Everybody Loves Raymond and he has this show called Somebody Feed Phil and he just goes to, he's Anthony Bourdain but he's like, Douche Bourdain, yes, where he just eats food and he, he'll he'll go to like the South Side of Chicago and he'll eat like he'll he'll go to like a community garden and he'll be like, oh, that's a good tomato way to eat. Oh, dude, he looks like a useless retard. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> look at him. He created <laughs> every, extremely corny. He created yeah. everybody loves Raymond. Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then he created this show. And yeah. they, you know, they were like, you don't have enough money. Let's let's send you all over the fucking world and you can eat and drink and do whatever you want and mm, not really yeah. be that entertaining. Well, this and is the whole thing where people are like, people want shows about like CFOs. Yeah. This is what you get. Well, yeah. it's, it's also funny yeah. because they'll like, they'll send him to these places and then it'll, it'll be him eating like a BLT and they're like, Phil, can you do some like waxing poetically? And he'll be like, well, the thing is, it's bread, bacon. <laughs> Lettuce and tomato. <laughs> yeah, he can't say. He describes it like a, like your elderly grandmother. He can't say anything objectively above what's happening in front here's of him. Here's the here's the reason Anthony Bourdain is good and the best of these types of guys is because he had no problem, I guess, um, listening to dark things. Like he'd go to another country and they talk about like you know my children were sold into sex slavery or whatever, mm. and he would be like, he'd, "Wow, we got." He'd ask a question. Mm. He wouldn't get all weird. Anytime I've seen this guy on his show and somebody says something mildly political or heavy, he just goes, oh, this rhubarb is delicious, though. <laughs> like, he just he has no clue. He gets nervous. He doesn't want to talk to anybody about them, actually. Mm-hmm. Bourdain, like, looked people in the eye and, like, cared. But, like, once again, I do that, too, on vacation. No one's fucking paying me yeah. to go on vacation. Yeah, I do that every time I eat. Yeah, I don't care. You fucking eating grilled cheese around the fucking country. Mm-hmm. Whatever. My favorite, I mean, my favorite part is in the documentary Roadrunner, if you watch it, is he goes to like like Senegal or something and he likes, he's buying the street food and he like, as is trying to be the good guy type of thing. It's a metaphor for his life perfectly. He buys a bunch of street food and he's like, oh, let's give it to the, the poor kids. And then he he get, he buys like five things, give it to the kids, and like these guys have like fucking knives, yeah, and like bats come out and just start hitting. No, he people. like starts a civil war <laughs> by like just handing out like sandwiches. So he gives them a bag of rice, and it destabilizes the economy. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally, like the currency doesn't exist mm-hmm. by eight a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he literally, yeah, he literally like, tries to in- introduce like NFTs to the mm, country yeah. and the whole thing collapses. Yeah. He starts a coup. Yeah. And then he's just walking away. He's like, yeah. anyway, I heard this, anyway, I heard this great plum wine. Yeah. He downtown. handed out like free tacos and by morning General Pinochet was dead. <laughs> 
I think we should all do a show where we review like eating like homeless people. Like I think we should have a show where we like cook beans over a fire in the can. Yeah. Like we get to we cook what we find in the trash yeah. and we live outside. Either that I like that. Either that or we should, kick ass. we should do a travel show where we just go to Chipotle's around the country. I'm into that. Everywhere we go, that we, sounds just, great. we just go to a Chipotle, and they're like, "We're like, oh, the barbacoa is a little, mm-hmm. little better here." And mm-hmm. they, they let me do that because I am guac mode verified. <laughs> I want everyone to know that. Oh, Devin has a Chipotle rewards card. Mm-hmm. Somebody paid you for guac. Somebody on recently your paid me for my birthday. Yeah. Jason yeah. Sheehan, thank you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got to get you a birthday present. No, you don't. No, we don't. Yeah. Nobody needs to. I, that it sets a precedent. Then mm-hmm. Jason's like, "What do I got?" Then I got to get him a birthday present. We don't know. I didn't get you anything. Yeah. Well, you did, didn't get me anything. What the hell? Well, because I that is why we set a precedent here. We don't do that. We can do it if we make way more money. But well, here's the thing. I don't care about that kind of stuff. Me neither. And it's so not you don't either. So then we just get to not do it. No, it's not meaningful. I don't yeah. care. And it, by the way, I also don't do the thing where I'm like, I like to surprise at any point when I fi- I don't even do that. All that type of shit. Don't even is, do that. It gets people in trouble. It gets people in trouble. If you set that precedent, then you, the guy starts wondering, well, they didn't get me anything. And then mm-hmm. they start thinking the guy that got him something is a better friend. Yep. It, it makes people stupid. Sometimes I'm out with my wife and we see something. We'll, we'll see a mural, like a, a poster of like Kobe. And Katie goes, oh, should we get that for Devin? I'm like, absolutely not. Right, because then you what, give what it to me. What are you doing? No. And then I, get all, I go, oh, thanks. Yeah. I get all stressed. I go, He's what the hang I go, what do I get Ben? What the hell? I don't know books. Well, I gotta you, buy him a book now. You gotta find a place to hang the poster. It's a whole thing. It's a thing. nightmare. Mm-hmm. Don't get people. Don't anything. get people anything. You gotta wait. Like take the stuff s- away from them. Yeah. Come to my house and take something. <laughs> How about that? I got plenty of shit I don't want. Come in, take a lamp or some shit. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. A birthday present, if anything, it should be I walk up to you and I go, "Here's five dollars," <laughs> and you take it and you put it in your wallet. Yeah. 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 That's it. Exactly. Uh, I do want to point something out before we close this episode. I don't. What's I, that? I clearly don't think you can drown. I I know you can drown in a bathtub. People are so retarded they don't understand. I'm yeah. I'm, sa- I'm just saying mm. retarded. But you but, don't know you can't make toast in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but also everything besides that you said has been true this yes. episode. That yep. is, yeah. You yeah. can drown in a glass of water. Mm-hmm. Yep. Everything I've said is true besides that. Mm-hmm. 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 Actually, almost everything I say on this podcast, I do believe. And then people think I'm joking. And I'm like, yeah, I was clearly a, clearly doing a bit. Mm-hmm. I don't actually think that about oh, no, Korean yeah. people. That happens all the time. To me on Hate Watch, too. I'm like a complete like cartoon character in Hate Watch. People are like, Devin's embarrassing this episode. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking... That's what be you know, it's like watching Dumb and Dumber. Be like, these guys are retarded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I have to yeah, piss. You dude. have to be. You're like Jeff Daniels is a stupid motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, the amount of times I get messages like, you can go piss, but a lot of comedy go is ahead. pretending to be stupid yes. to get to a place. The amount of times I've got messages like, dude, I can't believe on the latest episode you hate Albanians. Number one, I don't remember that, and number two, I don't even know what Albanians <laughs> are. Mm-hmm. I've just heard the word from other stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, Devin said you have to pretend to be stupid to get to good places in comedy. Mm-hmm. Good luck for me. I don't have to pretend. No, you're a natural, baby. <laughs> Time to pretend. Oh, uh, dude, a fucking dude. College, dude, MGMT playing. Me finger banging a chick who's not conscious. Dude, I have a great idea. Let's go to Michael's right now. Okay. Do people know what Michael's is? They probably know it. Let's go to Hobby Lobby right now. That'll yeah. probably be more accessible for the bit. Let's go to Hobby Lobby right now. Let's get bandanas for a dollar. Ooh. And let's wear them like MGMT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then let's like go to the beach and just like talk about music we like. Let's do, let's get the bandanas. Let's start dressing like the actors in Wild Hogs. Oh, I Full like Full leather, head to toe, and still okay. go to the beach. Dying like of heat stroke, just on the beach. I like culturally appropriating the idea of a tribal person, though, which yeah. is what MGMT kind of started. Yeah. Where they were like, they're like, I'm fucking, I'm not American. I'm, I'm Mowgli. I'm, I'm the jungle. I'm book, in the dude. jungle book. Even, oh, though, dude. even though I go to Columbia and so did my dad and my grandpa, <laughs> but I'm, I live in a warehouse and I'm Mowgli. Yeah. Yeah. 
those guys got so lucky because like they made some cool ass shit on a synthesizer and they like had a pet turtle and that was kind of it well yeah they were also the that cringy i hate that because they're like dude we're really good at making catchy music that everybody loves Mm. what if we ruin that (laughs) i know because we're gay about like people liking us on a mass level i know i wanted to like congratulations so much i just couldn't i know i know i tricked myself into liking Mm -hmm. it and then I finally admitted, like six months later, I was like, I don't like. Yeah, that. this is terrible. Yeah. yeah, and then like, and then like twenty years later, they're like, Oh, we'll make Little Dark Age. We actually want you to like us a little mm-hmm. bit. I'm like, Nope, you had your chance. You had your chance. TikTok people will like you, but they don't actually know who you are. You're dead to us now. You're dead to us. MGMT. Dead to us. Get fucked. Get fucked. Sit and spin, bitch. I'm gonna listen to Charlie XCX because she cares about me. Yeah. I'm going to listen to Charlie XCX because she drinks Mountain Dew and vodka and yeah. does cocaine. I'm gonna listen to Ayana Pop. And think about Lena Dunham. <laughs> I love it. I don't, don't care. care. I, I love, love it. it. <laughs> um, yeah. Excuse there me. I'm going to be the it, worst person imaginable. Yeah, that song always reminds me of we were at a party in college and Bill was dancing on the couch with his shirt on, and I think he had piss running down like his legs. <laughs> It was either sweat or piss. I don't Dude, know. There were so many parties where I like I tried to stand on top of things and I immediately got taken out by a ceiling fan mm-hmm. and like that. And then I was just <laughs> out for the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah, you just, just like KO'd a, immediately. A chunk taken out of your skull. Yeah, just fly through the window, mm-hmm. knock yeah. over a Christmas tree. <laughs> Drunk man's lobotomy. Yeah. You get fucked up like Super Dave Osborne. Yeah. Like a truck hits you yeah. and you fly 85 yeah. I'm feet. I'm playing a piano on top of an 18-wheeler. Yeah, and it goes through a tunnel. Yeah. You try to jump off the space needle and explode. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Well, patreon.com slash living party. Uh, we're playing golf on Thursday. We're going to shoot that. I'm going to edit that. And then we're shooting a big sketch on Saturday, which we've really been prepping for. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Devin Hate Watch Pod, Jay's Outside Drawings by Jace, the Clips Channel, Living Party Clips. Subscribe to that because we go live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you guys don't have anything else to say, I think that's the episode. We've yeah. done an hour and eleven. Hey, minutes Watch here. is banned for a week. Oh It'll yeah, be yeah. back uh, whenever a week yeah. is up. So, Devin, so. Devin's banned again because uh, I don't know why. Because we watched a clip that the, on YouTube that the in- whole internet watched on YouTube. Yeah. I've been reporting Devin's channel so he can't leave our podcast. <laughs> I don't want him to get mm. too big. Yeah, me and Jason yeah. have uh, abandonment issues. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he's slowly been sabotaging, sabotaging Devin's him. life. God, yeah. in a weird way, that makes me feel so warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hmm. We've been poisoning God, Ida. So you do love me. Oh, yeah. my God. My sick, twisted relationships in my childhood <laughs> makes me think this is love. <laughs> okay. Uh, bye, right. everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Thank you.